Hello students, welcome to Surface Chemistry Part 8. So let us begin this part with understanding the concept called purification of colloidal souls. Purification in the case of colloids indicates reducing the impurities to the minimum desired level is called as purification. Students, purification in the case of colloidal souls indicates it is reducing the impurities to the minimum desired level. And the question arises, which exist as impurities in colloids? And answer for that question is, the true solution particles are crystalloids. Ions, some molecules, they act as impurities in the colloids and removing those ions or excess ions or molecules is called as purification in the case of colloids and this can be done by a process called dialysis. So in the case of dialysis we are going to separate particles of colloids from crystalloids or true solution particles in other words ions or some molecules through a process called by diffusion by using suitable parchment paper or animal membrane. So in dialysis we separate colloidal particles from those of crystalloid particles or true solution particles by which process students by diffusion okay by using suitable membrane or a paper parchment paper or animal membrane. Now let us see what is dialysis. See in this diagram we used dialyzing membrane or animal membrane or parchment paper here. So this is our animal membrane or parchment paper and inside that one we have taken colloidal solution containing impurities such as crystalloids or true solution particles. Now what we have to do, we have to remove these crystalloid particles or true solution particles from colloids. Okay. So here what we are doing, going to do, we are going to dip this container containing the colloidal solution in a tank containing distilled water and a continuous supply of distilled water we are going to maintain here. So distilled water enters here and that is going to live here. So now what, has, what happens? Diffusion takes place. True solution particles or crystalloids being smaller in size, they can only pass through the parchment paper and they enter to this distilled water and they carried away by this running stream of water and whatever outcome we get here, it is distilled water plus crystalloids or true solution particles. Okay, let us understand that once again the impure soul is taken in the parchment paper or a bag so here impure colloidal solution we have taking and kept in a vessel containing distilled water we kept it pure water is continuously circulated through the this crystalloid solutions we are going to uh, circulate this water supply continuously this is water in and this is water out now what happens the molecules and ions diffuses through the membrane membrane into the outer water and a pure colloidal solution is left behind and these ions or molecules they carried away by the running stream of water. So this is how we are going to remove the impurities present in soul or colloidal solution. And this process of dialysis students finds application in the purification of blood by artificial kidney. So this is an instrument that is used for the purification of blood and that acts as artificial kidney. Okay. In this method impure blood is introduced in the artificial kidney instrument. The waste materials nothing but electrolytes they diffuses through the dialyzing membrane while colloidal 
blood particles are retained hence blood is going to be purified now let us see electrodialysis students the process of dialysis is very slow the rate of dialysis by using the parchment paper or animal membrane is very slow it takes a lot of time so how to speed up how to increase the rate of diffusion so that can be done by using a process called electrodialysis in electrodialysis everything remains same only extra thing that we are going to do is we are going to introduce two electrodes one positively charged electrode and one negatively charged electrode under influence of this electric charge these true solution or colloidal particles they diffuse fast let us understand with the help of diagram so in this method as i told the movement of ions across the membrane as in the case of dialysis takes place under the influence of applied electric current by using two electrodes so because of that what happens students the process is going to be very fast and uh, the dialysis takes place at faster rate so here you can see in the diagram it is same as that of the dialysis only thing is we introduced two electrodes one is anode here and one is cathode here so now under influence of this applied electric field what happens whatever true solution particles are present here crystalloids are present here ions are present here they diffuse fast through the membrane and that diffusion process is going to be fast so in this dialysis true solution is an electrolyte then movement of true solution particles can be made faster by applying electric field and now this is called as electrodialysis the process of dialysis carried out by placing two electrodes in the water that we discussed an electric field applied using the battery so now what happens the negative ions of the true solution get attracted by the positive electrode and the positive ions of the true solution get attracted by the negative electrode hence ions come out of the parchment bag much faster now let us see ultra filtration this is the process of separating the particles of colloids from those of the crystalloids or true solutions once again once again by filtration as the name indicates but what we do here we use ultra filter paper now question arises what is ultra filter paper uh, let us see that so ultra filter paper is a one that is obtained by treating ordinary filter paper with the colloid ion or gelatin solution to narrow down the pores suitably so we are going to reduce the size of the pores present in the ordinary filter paper by coating it with the colloid ion or gelatin so because of that process what happens the pore size decreases and only true solution particles diffuses diffuse through the solution where colloidal particles they being larger in size they cannot pass through the parchment or uh, paper or a bag whatever we use in ultra filtration so in this process the sole is poured over the ultra filter paper which permits solution of electrolytes only pass through it but retains colloidal particles now let us see some properties of colloids in that on the first one optical property students when the ordinary light passes through the true solutions okay for example uh, salt dissolved in water in a transparent glass as shown in the diagram so now let us pass light through that one so there will not be any change the question arises can we see the path of the light through the solution answer is no as we discussed okay replacing the true solution by colloidal solution now now what happens so colloidal solution we have taken and we are passing light through that one so now the path of the light is visible this path of the light that pass through this colloidal particle is visible examples i give you so that you can understand thoroughly okay colloidal solution path of light becomes visible and it occurs mainly due to the scattering of light by the colloidal particles so this scattering of light by the colloidal particles makes that path of light visible through that dispersion medium so scattering of light by colloidal particles make that path of light visible through the dispersion medium and this was the first observed by john tyndall and this effect is called as tyndall effect 
So they ask one more question, what is it in the effect? The scattering of light by colloidal particles is called as Tyndall effect because of that scattering what happens students the path of the light is going to be visible to us and the examples you can see here uh, when we pass the light through this colloidal solution you can clearly see the path of light that is visible similarly in the case of forest it is and even uh, light passing through the windows and uh, even we, you might have seen in the case of cinema hall when uh, from projector when uh, uh, they leave that light, at that time also that light is visible to us. The path of the light is visible to us. Now let us see the second type of property of colloids that is uh, kinetic property. When colloidal solution is observed under uh, microscope or ultra microscope students, it is found that the colloidal particles under undergo ceaseless random motion in all possible directions over a large area. So like this, they are under random zigzag motion or even uh, you can see like this, under random motion. Robert Brown observed this one and uh, this is called as a Brownian movement. This motion of dispersed phase particles is called as Brownian movement. So question arises why such movement occurs students. See the colloidal particles exhibit such a non-stop continuous motion it is because these colloidal particles are randomly bombarded by the molecules of the dispersion medium nothing but solvent molecules are randomly going to hit these colloidal particles and there is a transfer of kinetic energy from the solvent molecules to the colloidal particle students and because of that reason these particles are going to move randomly or in zigzag motion so why what is the reason very important they ask this is because the colloidal particles are constantly bombarded by the molecules of the dispersion medium so that is the reason why they are under random motion here you can see that these larger particle indicates colloidal particles where smaller indicates solvent molecules. Those, these solvent molecules are constantly hitting this colloidal particles in all possible directions. Hence, because of that reason, colloidal particles move in a zigzag motion and that is called as Brownian movement. Now let us see the next property that is electrical properties. See, colloidal particles are charged, <clears throat> either they carry positive charge or a negative charge. All particles in a given dispersion phase carry same charge, either they carry positive charge or a negative charge. And because of this charge students, these colloidal particles, they stay away from one another and uh, they are stable in nature. The stability in the case of colloids is mainly due to the repulsion among the same charged particles. So particles repel each other and do not come close together to form large particle that will precipitate out. This is the reason behind the stability of the colloids. Let us see the next property origin of the charge. How charge is going to form. The colloidal solution contains electrolyte although in very less amounts. Silver iodide. Student silver iodide this negatively charged colloidal particle obtained by adding potassium or sodium iodide to silver iodide. When potassium or sodium iodide is added to silver iodide, what happens? This silver iodide colloidal particle preferentially adsorbs iodide on its surface. In other words, I can say that iodide is coated on the surface of the silver iodide. Hence, this silver iodide is going to get a negative charge and of course it is going to attract positive charged counter ions from the solution. So the particles of silver iodide carry negative charge due to preferential adsorption of iodide ions on their surface. Similarly, uh, same silver iodide to that one when I add silver nitrate AgNO3, preferentially the silver iodide is going to adsorb Ag+. Ag plus is going to adsorb on the surface and this same silver iodide now gets the positive charge. Clear. So charge on the colloidal particle is due to preferential adsorption of ions present in the solution. 
the particle of silver oxide carry positive charge due to preferential adsorption of ag plus ions from the on the air surface so that is the reason why colloidal particle carry charge now let us see preferential adsorption the ability of colloidal particles to adsorb the particular type of ions from the electrolyte on their surface as we discussed is reason for the charge on the colloidal particles both of the particles of the medium the dispersion medium carries on electric charge equal to opposite sign to that of the colloidal particles students remember if colloidal particles carry the positive charge then dispersion medium is going to carry the negative charge both particles and the medium become electrically oppositely charged hence the colloidal solution entirely remains neutral the colloidal system as a whole is electrically neutral thus colloidal particles positively charged particles they are attracted by the negative electrode whereas negatively charged colloidal particles they are attracted by the positive electrodes now under influence of applied electric field we know that both dispersed phase will migrate as well as the dispersion medium that also migrate okay suppose if dispersed phase migrates then that process is called electrophoresis and if dispersion medium migrate then that is called electro osmosis now let us see a process called electrophoresis that is also called students by the name cataphoresis let us take u shaped glass tube let us fill that one with the sole or colloidal solution and water at the top okay now let us put two rubber corks and let us introduce two electrodes one is a positively charged electrode and another one is negatively charged electrode as shown in the diagram okay see this colloidal particles whatever present in the sole as we already discussed they are charged in nature so under influence of applied electric field what happens students so they start moving assume that we have positively charged colloidal particles here positively charged colloidal particles are present here so under influence of applied electric field what happens students this dispersed phase particle they start moving towards this negatively charged electrode and they are going to deposit here whereas that the dispersion medium is attracted by this positively charged electrode and this process is called as electrophoresis so what is electrophoresis the movement of the charged colloidal port particles under influence of applied electric field is called as electrophoresis now you can see that these positively charged colloidal particles they are attracted by negatively charged electrode and deposited on the negatively charged electrode okay the movement of colloidal particles either towards anode or cathode under influence of applied electric field is called as electrophoresis the main application of this electrophoresis is to find out the charge present on the colloidal particles students they may ask you one more question name the process that is used to identify a charge present on the colloidal particles so then you have to answer it is electrophoresis and uh, observing the movement of direction of the colloidal particles as i told we can uh, discuss charge on the colloidal particle rate of migration of sole particles can be determined and uh, we can use this method to separate mixture of colloidal particles suppose we have two mixtures in which one is a positively charged colloidal particle and another one is a negatively charged then we can use this method for the separation thank you students